our record, our Ray record. It's this. It's a disgrace, bro. Like, how did we, we finish third last season? Oh, did we finish third? Yeah, third, third. We finished third last season, bro, and couldn't beat no one. Like, bro, it's like man need to look deeper into what's going on. And the problem is, people will say, "Oh yeah, we finished third with a trophy and that," but bro, it's how did we finish third, bro? How? Better look too, because you guys have you guys have been questioned a lot with your away form. I think you've lost all against the top nine and. One, drew one, up. No, drew one and lost all the rest. Bruv, it's horrible. The manager needs, they need to look at the manager's um, away record, bro. Like, no one's talking about that enough. Because our home record was so good, yeah. Like, nobody's talking about it. Like, no one's talking about it. His away record, yeah, is testament to his lack of ability to coach wins there. First seasons always come with a bit of patience, though. As long as you get to the target, they'll ignore most mm. of the negatives. I think now you're in the second season. It's like, no, 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 no. We need to keep progressing. So if this away record was a problem last season, it can't be a problem this season. You need to work on it. Mm. I don't know with you guys because you're playing a bit better now, but I don't know if Ten Hag's going to do the same thing Arteta's doing, but with Mason Mount as soon as he's fit. I, I, I don't yeah. know we're play I don't know if we're playing a bit better. We always play better against Arsenal, bro. Like, do you know what I mean? We always do. Like, I'm not looking at this performance, yeah? I'm not looking at this performance and saying, yo, Man United are playing better because, bro, we always, we always up it for Arsenal. We always up it for Arsenal. So this performance doesn't mean anything. It's what we do next game. And then the game after that. If we go and we beat Brighton, then cool. But a performance against Arsenal doesn't mean anything because we always perform. Last season, we nearly, we nearly got a draw there as well and they scored in added time again. This is the second season yeah, that they've nicked you. it. Yeah, this is the second season they've nicked it at the end at their own ground. So let's not pretend that we don't always up our level for Arsenal, bro. We literally beat them in pre-season a few weeks ago and beat them yeah, this comfortably. This might be a mentality thing with you guys. Yeah, but again, again, do you know what I mean? Like, we can't keep looking at that, bruv. You know what I mean? We can't keep looking at that. These men need to show me what they're on. They but, need but to that, show me that's what they're it. on. Like, if they can wake up for certain teams and then they fall asleep for others, then clearly they're just not switched on and they wake up when they want to. Mm. 100%. And then that, that's, that's a deeper problem. Because I've seen that with Chelsea as well. For years, we're the, we were the team that will wake up and will drop... 11 man of the matches when Tottenham come to the bridge. And mm. then when we go away to Leeds, we'll lose 3-0 the next week. It's Chelsea all over. And that mm. was a mentality problem with us too. It's got to be yeah. switched on. 100%, but it shouldn't be like that. Do you know what I mean? When you're, at, when you're at a top club, it shouldn't matter who you're playing against. You should be turning these guys over. And this is and this is exactly the problem that I'm seeing right now. When you look at Man United's away record, it shows the manager's inability to coach wins because... Like I mentioned yesterday, back in the day, you used to be able to just put out maybe six or seven of your first team players if you're Man United, make a few changes, go to mid-table teams and just expect to win, even away from home. You can't do that now. Now all these teams have um, tactical managers. They have good players. You actually have to coach wins now away from home. You can't just send your players out there and say, oh, you man, handle this. Do you know what I mean? It's completely different. It's completely, completely different. So yeah, I guess game management, and also different atmospheres, also play, also play a factor with it as well. But if you can go to a place like the Emirates, who has improved in that facet over the last year or two, mm. then you should be able to do it in other away games as well. No, you're right, but I, I just really think yeah that not enough is being made. Not enough is being made of. Our record, our Ray record. It's this. It's a disgrace, bro. Like, how did we, we finish third last season? Oh, did we finish third? Yeah, third, third. We finished third last season, bro, and couldn't beat no one. Like, bro, it's like man need to look deeper into what's going on. And the problem is, people will say, "Oh, yeah, we finished third with a trophy and that." But, bro, it's how did we finish third, bro? How? Like, it's a joke, blood. You know what I mean? And and this is this is my main issue, my bro. This is my main issue right now with what's going on. Um. At the club, it's like there's always a flipping, there's always a flipping excuse. There's always this. There's always a scapegoat. This is what Man United do. They love to scapegoat a player. They love it. Now it's Sancho's turn. Before it was Pogba's turn. Before it was Martial. Yeah, that turn. whole statement stuff was the straight Whoa. after the game. Was, to be honest, 
that coming straight after the game might take a bit of pressure off the players. So that might be a little bit of a positive, but still, I don't think it takes pressure off the players, man. I think, I think the manager, I think the manager absolutely made a bad call there. Do you know what I'm saying? He made a bad call there. Do you know what I mean? And I think that that's going to end up, that's going to lead to him getting sacked eventually because he only signed a three year deal. He only signed a three year deal. So he's got two years left. Should I say one and a half years by Christmas? Like, Bro, it's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, this does not look like a... Big old prioritise Sancho over Ten Hag? It's not even about Sancho. This looks like a manager here that does not have the dressing room. When you're a manager that has the dressing room, you don't do that. You you don't do that. Do you know what I'm saying? You do not do not do that, that, bro. Look, man are saying fans will stand with Ten Hag. Ten Hag ain't got all the fans backing him. That's a myth. That's an absolute myth. He's never had all the fans backing him. He's never had that. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, even from the start, there were the Oli apologists, bruv. He's never had the full fan base. He's never ever had it. Like people are oblivious to what goes on outside of, um, outside of their little vacuum that they live in. Like he's never had a hundred percent rating at Manchester United. Never, never. Because there's fans that didn't want Oli to leave. There's fans that wanted Poch and didn't want him. Do you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. And then he definitely had the, doesn't have the dressing room if he's coming out and doing that. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. It's not about Sancho versus the manager, is. Yo, you've gone know, out and thrown a player. I've seen managers call out players before or call out, maybe not individuals. I've seen managers call out players before. I think I remember Jose doing it to Eden Hazard at one point. I remember yeah, one Yeah, but time the thing is, but... yeah, but Jose, bro, when Jose is doing it, yeah, when Jose is doing it to Eden Hazard, do you know what I'm saying? It's different, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Because he knows Eden Hazard. He knows Eden you know, Hazard. Hazard bro. Was starting then as well. So, exactly. Yeah. And he was starting Hazard. Hazard was playing at the time and he was saying, yo, we need more from you, bro. You're, you're our guy, but we need more from you. That's not the same as man's not in the squad and mm-hmm. then... And then you're throwing him under the bus, like when there's been men that are a lot worse than him, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that's crazy. That don't even make absolutely no sense whatsoever, bro. That makes no sense whatsoever, bro. Like when you've got um when you've got Anthony, yeah, who actually was all right against Arsenal. Do you know what I'm saying? But he's been poor pretty much the majority of the games he's played, and he's assured of a start no matter what happens. That, I don't how does get, that make I don't want to I don't want to jump to a conclusion <clears throat> off it because I know Sancho's had question marks over his training before but like that's years ago it's not necessarily now we don't know the facts we don't know whether Sancho was training well or not we don't know if Ten Hag's just trying to make excuses or if there's actually a little bit of fire underneath the smoke mm-hmm. not well, sure but like Sancho's got to get some opportunities <clears throat> to either swim or sink Mm. And right now, I don't think he's had any opportunities this season. You guys were playing him as a false nine before, and then I think... Bro, and he was playing well, and then what happens? And then in the season, you play Rashford in the net. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. It's, it's again, the same thing that Poch is doing, where you're diverting from what you did in pre-season. I keep saying pre-season is meant to be a precursor to the start of the season. That's the whole reason why you call it that. You don't Mm. go to pre-season and then go to the start of the season and do something completely different. So if I'm yeah, saying that for Poch, this is I kind of get that with Sancho. I also get people in the comment section saying he's had two and a half, three years and he hasn't really pulled up any trees either. But you can't really... When it comes to the whole training situation, we're not there. Bro, so listen, say, well, like, like the man one, said, this is the train. same manager here yeah, that watched us lose 7-0 to Liverpool and pick the same players again. And then, and then he talks about these imaginary standards that he has. Yeah. What, that, are the, that, what, that. what are these standards? Because you see me, if I am here, yeah, if I'm the manager and my team loses 7 0, bro, I'm dropping seven, eight men from that the next game. I don't care. I don't care. I'm, make, I'm making an example of all of them. I'm making an example of all of them. You lost 7 0, bruv. Bruno was oh, walking in that place. game. Bruno was walking in that game. But these, these same fans, yeah. That out here saying, oh yeah, but Sancho ain't done this, that and the other. Your captain Bruno was walking, blood, against Liverpool. Walking. But you, man, are still blowing smoke up his... Do you know what I mean? You lot are pathetic. You, man, are pathetic. And then you have the cheek 
to want to talk to me, yeah, and say, oh yeah, you're defending San, you're defending Sancho, bruv. You man are you man are embarrassing. That's your captain, Magnifico and that. You man always blowing smoke up this guy. Bray was walking on the pitch against Liverpool, bro. There's videos of the Bray walking on the pitch. And then you want me to believe, yeah, that the manager's got such high standards for training that he's going to drop people for that. But man can walk on the pitch, though, and start the next game and wear the armband. Why didn't he take the armband from him after that, then? Aye. Bro, I'm saying, yeah. That's I am saying, yeah. Listen, what I am saying is, yeah, be consistent. I don't care, bruv. Be consistent. Don't tell me you got super high standards, yeah? And then you're letting man walk. Yesterday, we conceded another goal because Rashford pulled out of a challenge. Another one. Against Nottingham Forest, oh, we no, conceded. You're criminal for that. Bro, against Nottingham Forest, we conceded because the ball was dropped out to Marcus Rashford and he decided to walk towards it. My man got away from him. Yesterday, again, could have gone up for a header, pulled out of the header, then we end up conceding, bro. No one's talking about that. Man want to talk about Sancho. You man are embarrassing, bro. That's just what it Anthony is. You want to talk about a Bray that didn't play? And see, other than work rates, like he hasn't really been pulling up trees either bro. on the right-hand side. Anthony so was all right, it. though. Anthony was all right, though. No, no, um, actually... in, in terms of last game, it was one of his better performance. I mean, in general, in terms of his United career. Yeah. Because the same arguments made for Sancho. Bruv, listen, at the end of the day, it's one rule for him and the next rule for everyone else, bro. That's what it is. Do you know what I mean? I don't care, bruv. I don't care how people feel about it. You know, like that. I don't care how people feel about it. I'll be real. He's, he's really got, he's got to get an opportunity after the international break to either sink or swim. Although it is tough fixtures that you're throwing him into. You've got Brighton and Bayern away as your first two. Yeah. Yeah, that's long. That's long. I, I, bro, I'm we're going to see right how up. we're going to see how consistent this manager is. Yeah, every time a player don't play well, I expect to see them dropped. It's not going to happen. The performances need really need to matter now because, like, yeah, you played better against United, but you still lost. It's another mm. defeat. Can't you, you guys need to be performing now, and you need to be dropping players that aren't helping you. 